This is going to be a look at some Deshaun Jackson film that actually exists from 2020 and 2021. It's kind of hard to believe that in 2022 you've got a 35, 36-year-old wide receiver who's survived and now, now, you know, working on his fourth team since 2020. Tampa Bay, as he aged out, you know, from being mostly productive, I guess I would say, 2018, 32 years old with Tampa Bay. 40, 41 catches, did lead the league in yards per catch in 2018, but Tampa Bay let him move on. Didn't really accomplish anything with the Eagles in 2019 and 20, other than one play, which I'll show you here at the beginning of this video, which I'd kind of forgotten about. And then last year, really unique, weird, uh, unusual. And when you watch the film, I think you'll probably be as stunned by some of the things as I was. He did play 16 games last year, 22 yards per catch, almost 23. I don't know with with the amount of man that the Ravens are 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 seeing since Bateman went out, is the reason that they signed Deshaun Jackson to try to hit, you know, one or two plays. That's why the title of the video is like one more time because it seems like Deshaun Jackson, at least once or twice, we had two touchdowns last year. At least once or twice a season, if he plays a significant amount of games, is going to pop a big a big uh, pass play. I'll show you some plays from him with the Rams early in 2021. We know they let him go, and then. Uh, I did not. I did not realize or could not recall that he had actually had an impact with the Raiders late last year, up to uh, like December 26th or December 27th, their last win or one in their their win streak to finish the season, uh, their 17-13 win over the Broncos. So we're going to check out some of the film. I'm not sure. Let me know what you think. Are they are they signing him just to be a guy that's that's available in, in case someone can't go or whatever you know, or is there a reason for it? I don't know. I'm not saying that I think there's a reason, but we've seen a lot more man since Bateman's been out. Rightfully so. I mean, look, the Dolphins played man, all right, but they're batshit crazy. And that's been talked about by numerous people in terms of their coverages, what they ask Xavion Howard and other guys to do. They're nuts, you know, with some of the things they do for real, starting with the sticks blitz zero stuff, even though it works, you know, quite well against us. Obviously, it doesn't work as well against other teams. Uh, they're nuts. I do wonder if the reason we have signed Deshaun Jackson is to put him out there if we're seeing a team like the Giants again. Somebody or the Browns. Somebody who's playing a lot of man. I, I'm, I'm not saying that I think it's going to work. I'm just wondering if that's the reason. If it's not just a emergency break glass if one or two guys that receiver can't go for a couple of weeks. I wonder if there's actually some rationale behind this. Let me know what you think in the comments section. All right, we're going to look at probably 10 or 12 plays. And look, I did select specific plays okay i didn't try to only select plays where um he get catches the football but you will see a number of plays early in 2021 where he's open and matt stafford can't get in the ball for various reasons and we know that other than bateman you know duvernay has been available twice recently on longer passes we've been unable to make that work make that connection. And then we had the fourth and two, you know, failed catch, failed throw, whatever you want to, however you want to attribute blame, I don't care, between Lamar and Tyler Wallace against the Browns, the uh, Bengals, excuse me. All right, so he's up top. This is last week of the regular season against Dallas. This is not against Diggs. This is before Diggs, I believe, had changed numbers. Uh, this, I believe Dallas had a lot of second string guys in, so it's kind of like, okay, you know, you scored a 81-yard touchdown, you know, to finish your career as an Eagle. Awesome story. Uh, even though like, you know, some of the things he's done at the goal line have, uh, have backfired against him in his career. And so I thought at that point, like, this is going to be a good story in terms of how Deshaun Jackson ends his career, because we know he did a lot of damage with the Eagles early in his career before, you know, Washington, Tampa Bay and all that stuff. Nope. Comes back in 2021. And actually I remember this against the Bucks, I think week one, maybe week two. Uh, their win, 34-24. I mean, he's open two or three times before Matt Stafford can get him the football. That is wide open. It's like a slot go seam. And then I think Cooper Cup is running, you know, some kind of like sale concept here. And that's going to hold this safety. You know, this is somewhat similar to some things the Ravens do offensively in terms of their routes. You'll see this safety go with Cup and for, inst or for a moment, for an instant, and then try to turn and get a field. But it's too late. And the DB's beat by a mile. I think that's bunting, but I could be wrong. Guy that that's not bunting. That's a wrong. That's the wrong player. Sorry. That was 43. End zone angle. You'll see how poorly thrown this ball is. 
Now, sometimes, you know, there's pressure in his face, so he appears to have Vita Veya, I'm trying to say that name correctly now, you know, flashing in front of his face. So, understand, okay, fine. Either way, he's wide open, and we're unable to get him to football, and the DB's able to make a play on it. Probably close to interference, but, you know, they don't call it. That was early in the game. Again, last year, week one, week two. Another situation against man. He's not winning all of these. I don't know if press man is going to be the thing. Like these vertical routes to the outside, just from the plays that I saw from last year, do not appear to be his strength. <clears throat> it appears to be zone, a double move, or something in the middle of the field. It doesn't, to me, this is not what appears to be his strength. And I'm not saying, you know, he can't catch these things or he didn't catch these things in his prime. That just doesn't appear to be what he would be capable of doing, at least based on this film last year. You know, this year, who knows? Because he's, you know, a year older at this point. You can see there's, you know, really no way for Stafford to fit that football in there up the left sideline. All right, another opportunity for him to make a play in that same game. You get a corner pressed up on him and it's cover two. He is he has a real good sense of zones and how to manipulate safeties in zones. So you can see him release inside and then take it back up the field. Really cool job, if you ask me. He's got a really good sense of what the safety and corner are doing. So he recognizes the coverage, and he's just selling this to the safety, and the safety buys it. Rightfully so. Looks like a good route. Ravens aren't seeing a ton. I mean, we still see some zone, don't get me wrong, in some of these passing situations where the Ravens need to get someone to stretch the field a little bit since Bateman's not there, you're seeing a lot more man, especially recently. The Bills didn't play a lot of man. They didn't. We had Bateman that game. The Bengals played more man than they typically do. The Browns played a lot. The Giants played a lot, but they got wink. That's what they do, unless it's inside the red zone. So here you can see there's a little bit you know, of pressure on him until right as he's throwing the football. And then he gets the guy right in his face, Vita Vea again. So we can't really fault Stafford for this throw. He's got a guy right in his face, severely underthrown, and also Deshaun Jackson loses it, appears to lose it in the lights. You didn't see it too well. I'll run that back. But he did have the guys beat by probably five yards. Can he do that for the Ravens this year? I don't know. I'm not saying that I, I think this is going to happen, that I think he's going to be that wide open, but I mean, this isn't that long ago. This is a year plus seven weeks, all right? So 59 weeks ago. Um, I don't watch every single game. But again, he has some understanding of how to sell the safety. Look at what he's doing here. He's bringing this in to let the safety start to jump it. And then once he takes it upfield, the safety falls down. That's it. It's over. I don't know. Do you think he can do that? Do you think he can do something like this? A big play for the Ravens twice in the next nine games. I don't know. He did it last year. If Lamar can get time like this to throw the football, he certainly can do it. Can he still get open here? I don't know. That one's a pretty good throw. Right on the money. A lot of separation. Uh, that one was early in the game. I think he also had a hand in another uh, touchdown to put them up 21-7, even though it wasn't his score. Week 5, 2021, so a little more than a year ago. Against the Seahawks, not sure what this corner up top is doing. Ball's severely underthrown. Ball's thrown more towards the sideline than it's, you know, possibly giving him the chance to outrun Jamal Adams. You got this, like, I guess trail man technique here, really weird. And then Jamal Adams is opening up and turning. Ball is already out. Again, Stafford's getting hit as he's throwing, so maybe that contributes to why it's so, you know, severely underthrown. Deshaun Jackson's able to catch it. 44, 46-yard gain, 48-yard gain, something like that at 35. 36 is probably – at some point, he's not going to be able to do this at all, right? At some point, he can't do this, period, physically. A film of him from 59 weeks ago and now 54 weeks ago, 56 weeks ago, uh, doing it against young DBs. All right, gets traded to the Raiders, or excuse me, gets released, ends up with the Raiders. Weirdest debut in some cases. He's being manned up here by the Chiefs, 13 personnel, so it's three tight ends. Look at what the Chiefs are doing. 
Guys, they've got a safety sitting over the top of them. Now, they're just masking the coverage is all they're doing. It's cover two. So the corner pushes him inside. It's not like they're playing man with a safety over the top like you would uh, you know, a DK Metcalf in certain situations if it's 13 personnel. But they were showing that pre-snap. Derek Carr is able to climb in the pocket, find some space to get him the ball, and for whatever reason, when he catches it, he doesn't think he's going to outrun uh, this corner. I think it's Fenton, and he turns backwards. No idea why. I think it's Fenton forces a fumble. Matthew Mathau picks it up. You'll see the end zone angle. Really weird play, but it, it does give you a little bit of a understanding of how fast he still was uh, right there. I think week 10. I believe it was week 10, right? Car climbing in the pocket. Boom. Delivering a good ball. DB tried to undercut it. You know, not the easiest catch in the world in terms of, you know, having some traffic in front of his face and then unfortunately loses the football. I really thought after his finish with the Raiders last year that that would be it for his career. I'm kind of surprised that the Ravens picked him up. I'm sure you are too. But there is some video evidence that he can still make plays downfield. Now, this is man, but this is him in the slot. So I think this is a little different. I believe this is Jordan Lewis, who is out for the year for the Cowboys now. But he's a guy who has eight career interceptions, eight and a half career sacks, over 260 career tackles. Not a bum. All right? And that's last year. I think, Like I said, Jordan Lewis, I think. He actually had an interception in Week 7 this year, Jordan Lewis, against the Lions. And I think he had some kind of nagging injury, and now he's out for the year. But he's beat. This concept is one the Ravens run. Deep crossers. Two deep crossers. One, two. If it's man, you got all this space to throw the football onto. Ravens also run it with a clear out on one side, and then the deep over concept. If it's cover three, then you throw it over the curl flat player underneath of the the cover the deep third corner. I could see him hitting one of these. Call me crazy. If from the slot, from the outside, I don't see him beating anyone vertically from the bottom of the numbers to the sideline. Of course, I have no idea what he looks like, you know, right now. But you can see him right here being manned up again. That's Jordan Lewis. He's a pretty good player. He's not a bad player at all. Eight and a half, eight career uh, interceptions. Eight and a half career sacks, over 260 plus tackles, starting corner for the Cowboys uh, for the last couple of years, to my knowledge. And Deshaun Jackson beat him last year in a 36-33 win for Dow for uh, the Raiders. Down here at the bottom side of the screen, I'm not sure who this corner is. I don't want to say Brown. Maybe he's the last name, number 30. Not a ton of vertical separation, but they do get an interference call. I just don't feel like these are the routes that at this point in time, what I'm seeing on film, he's going to win and make big plays on. It seems like it's going to be double moves against zone because he's a veteran. He's got great awareness in terms of what the zone is and how to manipulate the safety mid-play, which is an awesome skill. That's a great skill. Maybe you can teach it to some of our guys. Or against man from the slot, like a deep crosser, like I showed you how he beat. Uh, Jordan Lewis. Weirdest play, I mean, is an intercept interference, but this is damn near an interception by this DB. Look, it's a great ball in terms of his play on the ball, and then um, it does look like the ball hits the ground, but he still ends up controlling it. Unique play did end up being a pass interference, led to a touchdown, the very next play being a touchdown, one-yard touchdown run by Jacobs in a game that, like I said, the Raiders won 36-33. Wasn't done in terms of impact. Week 16, as late as week 16 last year. You know, if it sounds like I'm trying to sell you that Deshaun Jackson's going to have a ton of impact, that's not what I'm trying to do. I'm just, I'm showing you the film, and I can't lie about what the what the film shows. I mean, I just can't, right? If you can, then good for you. Week 16 against the Broncos. This is Ronald Darby, the bottom of the screen, who's a starting corner for the Broncos this year, was a starting corner last year. If you remember him, he played for the Eagles when they won the Super Bowl. He meaning Ronald Darby. It's a speed out. Jackson had four catches, 44 yards, I think on five targets that game. Speed out. Look at the acceleration when he catches it. It's there. Now, for those of you that are from the Maryland area, you know Ronald Darby's name. If you're not, I'll digress for a second. Ronald Darby played at Potomac High. 
That's where Tavon Young is from. I think they played together. At one point, Potomac had, I think, three. Well, they actually have three players in the NFL now. Potomac High School is from Oxon Hill, Maryland, PG County. Studs. Had studs for a long time. Had, had, they've had some down years, but they've had some badass years. They also have a guy who went to Maryland, Tayon Fleet Davis, uh, undrafted free agent running back, really highly recruited, went to Maryland, and now he's with the Chiefs, I believe, went undrafted this year. So you're talking about a high school who has three guys in the pros right now. Uh, most of the guys in the pros from Maryland are corners, DBs normally. Ronald Darby is not a bad DB. He's not. Like I said, I think he starts for Denver. This concept should look familiar to us. I'll let it run, and then I'll bring it back and draw it up some. It's a little different from the way we run it in some ways. Usually, we run a clear-out route. And Well, let me draw it up the other way. Usually, the clear-out route is from down, which might be what Deshaun Jackson ends up doing, right? And then Andrews is tightly aligned to the right, and he runs a deep over concept. We'll let you run it again. I'll run it again so it let you guys see it, and then we'll compare it. And I want to make a point about something in terms of his speed, at least on this video. We're going to talk about his width to run this route. When Mark Andrews runs the, the deep over, he's usually tightly aligned to the tackle. Deshaun Jackson is uh, uh, not lined up wide. He's not super tight to the tackle. He's pretty close. I'd say six yards. Maybe it's seven. You know, maybe, you, maybe you want to call it five, but I, maybe, maybe it is five. Deshaun Jackson is still outside of the hash on the other side of the field. And he's running this deep over. Well, really, it's kind of like a dig. Across the field, catching it near the bottom side of the numbers. I'm not sure who else we have. I mean, Bateman, yeah. Duve, yes. But Duve doesn't get to run those routes a lot. When he does, he catches them because he catches every damn thing, right? I wonder if there's the possibility of Russ running clear out routes from someone else and Deshaun Jackson running this because to me, based on the film I'm showing you tonight, that's the route that it looks most dangerous. That's the route that he beat uh, Jordan Lewis on in man for the Cowboys. Uh, that's the route that I showed you earlier. I forget who it was against early in this video. And you can see all the space that's cleared out here. Good throw by Carr. Pretty cleanly beat, again, a starting corner in the NFL last year at this time and a starting corner right now, I believe. Back to the first play, 2020. Look, you guys let me know. Um, it looks to me like he's a guy who could possibly pop a big play or two for us. Is it going to happen once a game? No. There's too many guys who need targets. Could he get in there for six, eight, ten snaps a game and run some vertical stuff to try to clear out some of the field? Yeah, I guess he could. A against certain zones, if we think we're going to get zone, it might not be a bad idea to, to have him in there because, and look, just so you know, uh, this is going to be difficult for me to explain succinctly, certain defensive coordinators play certain coverages in particular parts of the field. Like, for example, Wink Martindale wasn't going to play cover two when he was D.C. for the Ravens, and even still kind of for the Giants, until the ball was like down in between the negative 25, 26, 28, and like the negative 18. Because he didn't trust his safeties and his guys to cover the width and the and the verticality of the field in the, in the cover two zone. I'm talking about trusting his safeties. But once the field was compressed there, and the safeties didn't have as much depth to cover, he felt comfortable doing so. It appears as if he's the same way still with the Giants because those tendencies kind of held true against the Ravens in the game they played in Week 6. What's my point in telling you all this? My point is if someone has a tendency as a defensive coordinator to play cover two in a certain part of the field, let's say midfield for whatever reason, it might not be a bad idea to get Deshaun Jackson in there. You've seen film of him manipulating the safeties if we can get time, right? You, you've seen the film of him manipulating the safeties once he gets a decent release, and he still looks to be getting decent releases to me. Other than the second play that I showed you, I think, or maybe the third, it was the second play against against um, it was the second play for the Rams, where he basically got covered up, and Stafford tried to throw it down the left side, lined up at the top of the screen, you know, nothing open at all. And then the one against the Cowboys, I think it was Brown number thirty. I think it's Brown that was called a DPI, defense, defensive pass interference, where the ball hit the ground and the guy looked like he kind of intercepted it. Those were the least quality releases, in my opinion. 
you can let me know what you think. Uh, I would love to see him score one more touchdown. I would. Hell, I'd love to see him score five, but I just don't think that's going to happen. Does he have the legs for playing 30 snaps a game and running vertical routes? Probably not. You know, does he have the legs to get out there six, eight, ten times a game? You know, maybe 14 and run some vertical routes, stretch some stuff, particularly if we think we're going to get zone or if we think we're getting man and we want to run him on a deep crosser. He appears to still have some ability. You let me know uh, if you agree. Do I think he has enough ability to beat the highest level corners in the NFL? Well, no. But I've shown you some good ones, Ronald Darby and Jordan Lewis, that he's been, he was able to beat in 2021. Makes me wonder uh, what impact he'll be able to have if and when we actually see him get on the field. You guys let me know what you think of my thoughts and some of the film I showed you in the comments section.